Are you struggling to lose weight on the carnivore diet? In today's video, I go over the top three things to consider if you are having a hard time losing fat on carnivore. If you're new here, my name is Alice and I've personally lost over 40 pounds on my own weight loss journey. My husband has lost 50 pounds himself and together we've been on a ketogenic meat-based diet for the last two and a half years. Our channel is all about spreading the message about this way of eating and helping as many people as possible. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and let's get right into it. First factor to consider is are you really 100% carnivore and have eliminated all of these sugars, starches, and seed oils from your diet? Now, one common problem that we see our coaching clients have is that they are carnivore-ish, which means that they haven't fully taken the leap and given themselves permission to commit to the diet 100%. Now, this is not a statement of judgment. There is nothing wrong with being carnivore-ish. But if your ish means that you are still having the occasional drink, having carbs and sugar maybe on the weekend, and then sticking to the diet during the week, but your goal is fast and permanent weight loss, you know, these are the sorts of decisions that will hurt or minimize your results. Now, a common belief that I was taught by the people around me when I was growing up when it relates to junk food or unhealthy foods is that a little bit won't hurt. And I always grew up thinking, you know, a little bit won't hurt, a little bit won't hurt. Every time I ate something that wasn't good, I'd be like, you know, a little bit won't hurt. And through my own health and weight loss experience, I have just realized that a little bit will hurt. And I've realized that the people who give that sort of advice are generally not in the position that I want to be in when it comes to body composition as well as my overall you know, health and well-being. And that phrase, a little bit won't hurt, is usually just something that people say to themselves to make themselves feel better by making the wrong decision at that point in time. But I'm here to tell you that after my own weight loss transformation as well as Kevin's weight loss transformation, that Every little bit will hurt your progress. And the truth is every decision that you make at every point in your life does matter towards the outcome you're trying to work towards. So obviously if you eat one cheeseburger on the weekend or you have one drink, it's probably not gonna show up on the scale and it's probably not a big deal, right? It's just a single meal. But the reality is again, every single food decision you make at any point in time does matter because how you do something is how you do everything. So if you constantly tell yourself it's okay to you know, follow the 80-20 rule, be carnivore-ish, this pattern will just repeat itself over and over again. And it's the small habits and the small decisions that really make an impact on people's progress in the long term. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you cannot lose weight if you do these things. You can still lose weight, even if you still have you know, the occasional treats here and there and you're not you know, 100% pure carnivore, but you're just not maximizing the results for the effort that you're putting in. For myself, I would say that the only time that I would apply the 80-20 rule or you know, trying to have balance in your diet is when you are in maintenance mode. Now, if you're just trying to be healthier overall and you don't have a plan in mind, you don't have a specific plan for weight loss, you know, weight loss is something that's just nice to have or maybe a side benefit of this way of eating, then I think that the 80-20 rule being carnivore-ish is totally fine. But if you are on a targeted weight loss program and you are serious about getting results, and you want to you know, lose a certain amount of fat by a certain date, then every bite of food you put in your mouth does matter. Carnivore is a high fat, high protein diet. And if you're allowing yourself to be carnivore-ish and your ish means that you're having some occasional carbs here and there, you're basically high fat, high protein and moderate carbs, which really isn't that different from the standard American diet and from a fat loss perspective being high fat, high protein and moderate carbs isn't really gonna do anything for you. Just from my knowledge, people that can get away from eating high fat, high protein and moderate-ish carbs are really people that spend hours at the gym exercising because they just have the metabolism and the activity to support that macronutrient profile for themselves. Now again, this is not a statement of judgment. You definitely don't lose your carnivore card if you do this. I'm just saying that if you set a goal for yourself to lose X pounds by X date, um, during that time period, you have to do whatever you can to maximize your results. But again, if you're just trying to improve your overall general health and you don't have a clear or set goal in mind and weight loss is something that's just nice to have it's just like a side benefit if it comes great if it doesn't that's okay too if you have that sort of mindset then that's totally okay to be carnivore ish just remember that you get what you put into it when it comes to this diet and this way of eating if you go into something with 30 percent effort you will get 30 percent results you go into something with 110 percent effort 
Well then, I would hope that you would get 110% results. Now, if you're on carnivore and you find it to be a little bit too restrictive, maybe it just doesn't work with your lifestyle, having to go out to eat, having to socialize and you know make time for others, but your ish is still ketogenic, meaning that you are still keeping net carbs below 50 grams, ideally 25 grams, then I would say that situation is a lot better than going for carbs. Tip number two is to evaluate your meals and what you're eating. So with weight loss, it is very important to be logical and not emotional. The more you see weight loss as a logical and rational process, see food as fuel, and you try to silence the emotions, thoughts, and feelings that come to your mind during this process, the more likely you are to succeed. So having said that, if you are struggling with weight loss on carnivore, here are some logical guiding questions that you might want to ask yourself. Number one, are you eating the correct fat to protein ratio? Number two, do you even know how to calculate your own fat to protein ratio? Number three, are you eating the right meats? Just because you are eating anything out there that is carnivore doesn't mean that you are going to maximize your weight loss results. Number four, do you know how much meat you are supposed to eat to lose weight? Number five, how do you know whether you are full and do you know whether you've eaten enough? Now, I remember when I first started carnivore, all of these things were a learning process for me. I remember finishing my plate of food and thinking that, you know, I could probably go for another beef stick right now, or I could probably eat some pork rinds or some cheese. I think I feel full, but I could probably snack on some more things. And then because of those thoughts that would come up in my mind, I would question whether or not I was actually full and whether or not I had eaten enough. And the reason for that is that when you are first starting carnivore, maybe you are transitioning off of the standard American diet or you are transitioning from keto, your mind does need to readjust to the carnivore way of eating. And you have to retrain your brain how to eat because your hunger hormones are adjusting. To be honest, I think it is a bit of a confusing process. It's not really a straight line. And that's the reason why a lot of people actually end up gaining weight or plateauing on carnivore, simply because they don't know how much to eat or when to stop eating. And the mind can play a lot of tricks on you, especially when you're used to the standard American way of eating. On the standard American way of eating, you can always eat more. And so I think our brains are just used to you know, saving a little bit of room for dessert or like eating a full plate of food and being like, I could still eat a little bit more food and not really knowing when to stop eating or when your body is truly full. Now, if any of the questions that I mentioned earlier resonate with you, it these are the types of questions and answers that we would go through in our one-on-one -on -one signature coaching program, The Carnivore Cut. Because we are all on this diet for different reasons, we all have different goals and our bodies respond to this diet in different ways. There are no blanket solutions or blanket answers that are available. This is also the reason why you see so much information out there of people saying different things about their macros, about what works for them, what doesn't work for them. Now, maybe you've consumed all of the free information available on the internet and you are extremely knowledgeable about this way of eating, but you might still be struggling with the accountability aspect of the diet and sticking to it 100%. We humans are just social creatures and we have a tendency to want to conform. So for some people having that external accountability in their lives really adds a ton of value and they can really see a ton of success when they know that they have another person to talk to or they have another set of eyes on uh, their food and their eating situation. And of course, accountability is something that you would get with one-on-one -on -one coaching with Kevin or myself. If this is something that you are interested in, I will leave a link to our booking application in the description below. Number three is being patient. Now I know some people might not want to hear this or we hear it and we're like, yeah, 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 I know you gotta be patient. In order to be successful with weight loss, you do have to be patient. And patience is really like a skill or a muscle that you kind of just work on and get better at over time. It's not something that you have or you don't have. Now, fast results are absolutely possible, but just remember that there are no free handouts in life. Again, I think this is something that we all know deep down inside. Yes, we have to be patient, but we don't necessarily want to hear it. And then because we have phones and technology and the internet nowadays, everything is just available to us so quickly, it kind of messes with our heads and it makes us unable to practice delayed gratification. We all want the quick fixes, the fast solutions. Everyone wants the final result without putting in the work. But the reality is again, in life, you can't have your cake and eat it too. And if you think that way, it's just gonna be really hard for you to stick to any diet and keep it off in the long run. In order to keep weight loss off sustainably in the long run, you do have to evaluate your own dietary and eating habits and ask yourself whether you'd be willing to make permanent changes in your food choices. 
Because even if you go on this diet and you commit to it for 90 days, but after those 90 days, you go back to your old ways of eating, you're just gonna gain the weight back, right? That's the reason why so many people have tried all of the diets and haven't been able to keep it off. And if that's just because they end up going back to whatever they were doing before that got them to the weight they were unhappy with in the first place. In life, there are just no easy shortcuts to the top of the mountain. Now, obviously, if you are strategic, if you implement strategy, then there are faster and easier paths if you learn to enjoy the process, to enjoy the little things that you have to do every day, to enjoy the meals, to enjoy that the person you're becoming rather than waking up every morning and be like, oh, I gotta battle the scale. I gotta restrict myself from eating all these foods I don't like. If that's your mindset and you're like constantly just battling, battling, everything is a battle in your head, it's gonna be really hard for you to be successful with weight loss and especially with this carnivore way of eating. All that restrictive thinking and those restrictive thoughts are just gonna make you want to to reach for some cookies and reach for a box of Oreos when they show up. I guess what I'm trying to say that it's not really the diet that is screwing with you. A lot of it has to do with your mindset. And a huge part of weight loss is absolutely psychological. And the only reason that I know this is because I've gone through my own weight loss journey myself and succeeded in keeping the weight off sustainably for many years now. I have gone through all of the ups and downs. I felt every negative emotion. I felt every positive emotion. There is absolutely nothing when it comes to weight loss that I haven't experienced myself. And having come out of the other side, I can tell you that a huge part of it really is just the psychological battle that you have to go through. If you are emotional about food, if you are emotional about eating and you let those emotions impact your decision-making process, it will lead to bad decisions, 100% guaranteed. One last bonus tip I have for you is to stop comparing your results to other people online. I know what you're probably doing. You're probably scrolling on social media through your phone, checking out a recent viral YouTube video that somebody posted about how they lost, you know, 80 pounds in two weeks on the carnivore diet or something ridiculous like that. I'm exaggerating, but you get my point. Or maybe you're scrolling through your feed and looking at some non carnivores and you know, you see some other people that have lost like 50 or 60 pounds in a very short period of time. And you're comparing your diet to their diet. And uh, you know, you're getting frustrated. Just remember that a lot of these extreme success success stories that you see online that go viral, that get all the clicks, views, and likes are usually the more rare cases or the more unicorn cases. And you know, there's a reason why the videos go viral or the videos get really popular. It's because the results are so extreme and they happen so quickly. And it's like, oh, oh I lost 80 pounds in like two days or something ridiculous like that. Without realizing it, when we're scrolling through our phones and looking at these viral cases or these exception unicorn cases, we end up psychologically you know, adjusting our expectations um, and we end up comparing ourselves and we end up comparing our progress to these you know, unicorn viral cases. Now, obviously we are happy for these people that they've been able to see tremendous success with this diet in short amounts of time. I think that's a beautiful thing and it really spreads the message and promotes this way of eating. But what I'm saying is some of the viral or very extreme cases maybe represent like five to 10% of results for whatever reason. And I don't have an answer to why, you know, people, some people are losing, you know, 80 pounds in a couple of weeks. And for some people, it takes a little bit longer. Everybody's body is different. I guess it's more about just shifting your expectations in any sort of you know, normal distribution of data, there will always be outliers and anomalies. But for 90% of us normal people, we do just have to suck it up a little bit and accept that not everybody is going to lose 80 pounds in like two days or whatever, whatever people are showing online these days. Now, if you liked my video today, I do have a free training on how to lose body fat on the carnivore diet, where Kevin and I go over the top four mistakes that people are making that keep them stuck with fat loss on carnivore. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check the description link below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button today. Leave me a comment down below on what tips you might have for other carnivores out there who might be struggling to see weight loss results on carnivore. Until next time.